Hallelujah. Glory to God. We honor him in this house. The God of our life. I want to, you to congratulate your, your neighbor. I said, the Lord bless you for coming to Zion this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. You are set up today for good. I am so glad that you've been set up this morning. Hallelujah. To God be praised and honor. I appreciate our senior pastor for the opportunity to be able to bring the word of God to us this morning. The Lord bless you, sir. I have a few more minutes before me and I'm trusting God to help me back into your life. The intent of his heart for this morning. Let's join it to John chapter 6. I will read from verse 5. And if I can continue, we, I mean, finish within the space of time that we have this morning, maybe second service, but we'll see how God will help us. The scripture read from John chapter 6, verse 1. It said, after these things, Jesus went over to the to sea of Galilee, which is the sea of Tiberias. And when I saw after this thing, I was curious what has happened before. The prelude was the fact that they had to struggle with Jesus. They were upset with him and angry with him over the fact that he healed. He was blessing people, especially it happened on a Sabbath day. And Jesus had to take them through a whole lot of things. They weren't happy about that. But that won't stop my Jesus. After this thing, I don't know what has happened before now in 2020, but it's not going to stop you. Somebody hearing me? I don't know what has happened each at all, but whatever it is, it's going to be a springboard for you to move higher onto higher heights in Jesus' name. So after this thing, my Jesus kept on going, and a great multitude. You see, there's something about you keeping going. There's something about you not allowing the past to hold you down, because when you go, there is more in your future than the things behind you. That is why I trust the God of heaven to give you grace and strength in spite of what is behind you to keep on moving to what is ahead of you. Because the thing that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, they have not entered in the heart of men, they are the things that are packaged in your future. And you will get there in Jesus' name. Now look at this. Uh, the Bible says in verse 3, and Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciple. And the Passover, a feast of the Jew, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Verse 6. And this is said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. There was a problem at hand. And he asked Philip, Where are we going to get food? bread to feed these people. The Bible says, he, though he asked the question, he himself knew what he would do. So, in, when the problem, problem presented in, in itself, uh, Jesus was not out of option of what to do. And in my heart, I said, why will he ask a question when you know what to do? There, there are some things that is just reserved for God to handle. But he asked, but it doesn't matter to me. But what mattered to me was that he knew what to do. And I call that God's factor. And when I find myself in a situation where I'm asking questions too, and it, it looks as if God is looking at me, and he seems not to be doing anything about it, I can take wrestling and comfort in this world. Uh, that though he might not be saying anything, though he might seem as if he's asking me questions, he himself do what? You know what to do? Akuna matata. Tell your neighbor, Akuna matata. No need to worry, sir, because Jesus got this. Can you tell your neighbor, Jesus got this? I don't know what it is that you're struggling. He got it. So there is no need to worry. He knew what to do. There is something reserved for him only that only him can figure out. And when we, we as humanity, the people of his, of, of his creation, when we understand that there are some things that we cannot handle, but only him can handle it. We will take a seat and chill. Now look at this. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That every one of them might take a little bite. Now digging deep into the scripture, I find out that what he was talking about, 200 worth of penny, is somebody more than half a year wage. And he's saying if somebody has been keeping his pay check for over six months, to get bread for these people to eat, they won't even be filled. And here is this. So that looks like, verse 7 looks to me like an impossible situation. So these people must go home hungry. 
But thank God that he himself knew what to do. Now verse 8, there comes one of his disciples, Andrews, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? We have a little boy with five barley of bread and small two fish. But how can that suffice for this multitude? It is not possible. Therefore, we still have to let them go empty-handed. But my prayer for you is this, and declaration, that whatever it is that you're desiring Jehovah for, you will not go empty-handed. You will not return without it. In the name of Jesus. Now look at it. They say it's a little thing. But then I look at it. I want to bring it down into another. Before I go into the spiritual. I want to bring it out to this area right now. Everything is spiritual anyway. I want to bring it out. There was an information that was provided to Jesus. There was a problem at hand. And somebody brought an information. So ladies and gentlemen. I don't want you to ignore the power of little. Do not ignore the power of little and the power of information. Every situation that a man finds himself, there is an information, there is something about the, about the little that is needful to catapult you to where you need to be. In this instance, Jesus will still have to do something. He knew all along. I, I believe right from the word go, he knew there's a little boy there. And he was asking a question. But then when they found, when they found the solution that Jesus was going to use, as far as they were concerned, it's still nothing. But he knew what to do. But the question that the, the, the information or the challenge I want to push to you is when the little comes across your path, do not despise it. Hold it. Some of you in the beat of God giving you answer to your breakthrough, what you, it might be a little that will appear. <laughs> you remember, and I find that my God doesn't always start with big. He always start with little. And that's why I said, don't despise the day of small beginning. Maybe the person that God will bring across your path to man will be like you and me and, and, and the pole of fire. You, you can't stand here. You know how they can you, me, and they, and they now do like this. And I don't know how I still can do me. So, it might be that little, but there's something to do with that little. And you'll be surprised how God will magnify. But that's not where I'm going this morning. Let's move forward. The Bible now said, in verse 10, and Jesus made them to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So that men sat down in numbers about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaf, the little, and he had given thanks. When he has given thanks, he distributed it. To the disciples to give to the people and then uh, everyone had verse 12. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remains that nothing be lost. Gather the fragment, the leftover. NIV say, gather the leftover so that nothing is wasted. This money... The main thing I would want to communicate to you, I know you've had some things thus far, is that do not throw away the scrap. Jesus fed 5,000. All through the pages of the scripture, you will see Jesus every now and then feeding people and they will be full and there will still be leftover. And Jesus will instruct them that the leftover must be gathered. The leftover must not be thrown away. The leftover, they will gather it in the basket. And I wonder, because there is, in, in this particular regard, the leftover is bread. And how long can a bread go without getting stale? But Jesus still told them, on this instance, gather it. Because there's something about gathering a scrap. And when I'm talking about scrap, scrap is not, it's not a waste. It's not a junk, anyhow. You, you understand that? Scraps have, have monetary value. It's not like a junk that you throw away and has nothing to do with it. It's actually something that, would, that many people are making use of to turn them into millionaires. So it's very resourceful. And Jesus will ask them, God died. There is treasure in this thing. It might look like, okay, already now I'm full. I'm satisfied. But if I find that, that many times things like that happen to us in our life. We are full, we are satisfied, and we throw away the scrap. But he told them, gather it. Do not let anything be wasted. And the question I want to begin to ask us 
this morning. What are the scraps in your life that you must not throw away? And you need to keep in mind that we, start, we, we serve a very scrappy God. And we serve a God that, that deals in scraps. When we, I read through the scripture, even looking at the, the, the narrative of how the children of Israel passed through, through, through River Jordan. He told them, that he, he told Joshua, he said, tell the elders of the people of Israel. 12 of them, one for each tribe. Let them go to the, mid of, to the midst of the river where the priests are standing. Let them pick up 12 stones. And where you will sit tonight, make sure you lay those 12 stones there. And those 12 stones, they must be kept for many generations. And when your children in years to come will ask of you, why, where did you get this stone? Why are they special? There are stones everywhere. You will tell them, this is not just ordinary stone. And you will sit them down. And tell them, this is how we got this stone. This stone is deep, deep, deep. <laughs> you, this, it might look like any other stone, but it's quite different. Gather the scraps. I also remember when he was filling them with manna in the wilderness. He said to them, gather what's on and put it inside the ark. You, after you are full, make sure you still keep some. Why is God asking that we gather the scraps? <laughs> because you still have a long way ahead of you and your scraps of today, your scraps of last year, your scrap of 10 years ago is needful for your spoil of tomorrow. So the question you might want to begin to ask me is this. Uh, what are scraps? Scraps are your spoils of yesterday battle. There are things that you gather, they are your testimony of what you've been through, what has happened to you. They have souvenir of places that you have visited. <laughs> places that you have been. A picture that you, that you took in, in Italy, in Paris. You know, the picture when you went to Jerusalem, the picture that you took. They are your scraps. You need to keep them. Because only you can tell the story of how you got there. You need to keep them. The Bible was saying in Psalm 103 verse 2. He said, that was uh, David that was singing to the Lord. It starts from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not, for, uh, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2 now said, bless the Lord again, O my soul. And, that's a first emphasis. So there is a sense in which we come to church and say, Lord, we thank you, we give you praise, you are beautiful, you are holy, you are righteous. But then, Lord, I thank you for my victory. I almost got crushed last year, but you survived. You, you, you sustained me. Hey, 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 last year, I thought I won't be here. I even thought my house was going to be foreclosed because of things that were going on around me. But Lord, here I am. I give a praise. When March, the, when March, not March 13, 2020, and they say everywhere shut down. It seems as if the whole heart is going to collapse. You know something, when that happened, there was a time I was thinking, ah, okay, we have food in the house. When the food finished, and they haven't opened us up. What are we going to do? But then the food never finished before we got opened up. Those are scraps to keep. Some of you, maybe there was a time, action, you were sneezing, something was hurting her. Maybe it's this. And everything inside of you was telling is this. You know how it happened to this person? Say, and say, Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my banner. He will dwell in the secret place of the most. Shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my strength and my salvation. You begin to say that the next day you woke up, you were okay. Those are scraps to keep your A thousand falling on your right, on your left, everywhere. On your job, pam, 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 pam. But the Lord, not by works of righteousness, beloved, but by his grace. I don't know about you. I have a lot of scraps that I don't know what to do about. So David said, forget not his benefits. It's a, they have benefits. He said, do not forget them. Why do you need to keep your scrap? Because it is possible to forget do you know Jesus disciple in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 5 to 11? I will read because of time. Matthew 5, Matthew what, 16 now, verse 5. They were going and Jesus was telling them, beware of the, of, of the level of the Pharisee. He was telling them. And the point they were telling them, hey, Sam, you know what? We made a mistake. We forgot to bring bread. That's why it's now scolding us. And Jesus was like, seriously? 
You don't understand? Oh, you are little, little faith. So if you didn't bring bread, do you think I'll be scolding you? You forgot when I fed 5,000. How many baskets did I carry? Tell me. And they told him, 4,000, 4, 4, what happened? And they told him. So do you think that was? No. The gathering of the, of the scraps uh, is not just for you to just put things there. It's because there will be a time in your life uh, that you need to revisit those scraps. You need to begin to uh, arrange it and say, you know what? This, this, I remember this one. I remember this one. And let me tell you this. I don't know about you. In my few journey on life, in life, I have some scribes too. As I begin to wrap up, because I won't want, I can't finish this right now. Thank you. You will need to gather some scrap. <laughs> you know why you need to gather your scraps? Because the journey ahead is glorious. The journey ahead is wonderful and you will need the strength from where he has brought you from the strength from what he has accomplished in your hand is your life you will need that strength to forge ahead you know i love one of these our song i, I won't sing it because the song is spanish he said the love that he has shown me you see there are some things in our life i just told pastor and said you know we don't even have to bother ourselves about this it's like there's no point he always find a way of just we just walk through. We, we, we won't see rain. We won't see wind. We won't say, uh, we won't have a dream. It just walk us through it. Those are scraps. So when we find ourselves in such particular junction again, hakuna matata. No worries. Because we know. <laughs> it always comes true. What am I talking about? Scraps, what would they do in your life? I told you I have some scraps. And I encourage you when you get home today, you need to look through your closet. Maybe you can find some. And if you can find physical one that you can hold, yes. If you can't find physical one that you can hold, oh, thank you, Jesus. If you can't find physical one that you can hold, you can write it down. Because you need it. Even holding this in my hand like this, the emotion rush in. This is a symbol of a scrap of where I've been. And when the God of heaven, who makes the barren to keep house, making them joyful mother of children, not just a child. I told God, I, you I allow me to have brain and I'm smart. I know child is different from children. So once you make it children, you're free. When it was still just a child, I uh, were talking. Oh, God, we're talking. <laughs> and Pastor Jide had to walk. Yeah, you didn't get that joke. That's fine. <laughs> it was still a child. Death came. It doesn't matter. When it's children, I will let you go. And he made it children. Did somebody get what I'm talking about? This, this is another scrap. Some of you probably know what they use it for. <laughs> they first gave it to me. I was like, what? But when the time came, I said, I think they know what they're talking about. <laughs> I wanted to throw it away first. I said, no. Because there is more to it than just this. And what you know, you know what you do with your scrap? Your scrap strengthens your love and commitment to your God. I'm all, all the gods. Who is like you? Glorious in holiness. Rise up on your feet and fearfully praise this. Do you wonder?
scraps online in person on the in the overflow you will yet do wonders don't throw away your scrap love bless you